Delighted to have with us here at ASCO 2011, Professor Alessandro Vanucci. He is from the University of Florence in Italy. Thanks for joining us, sir. It's a pleasure. Let's talk about the Comfort 2 trial. You presented some data here. What can you tell us about it? Comfort 2 is a randomized trial of the JAK inhibitor INC424 in patients with myelofibrosis. The trial was designed in order to evaluate the activity of the drug against some of the major clinical complaints of these patients that are represented by splenomegaly and by a constellation, a variety of symptoms that affect the patients and uh, affect their quality of life. So this was a randomized trial of the active drug INC424 against best available treatment. That means what the physician thought was the best treatment for that patient at that time. And in this trial, we enrolled patients with advanced forms of myelofibrosis that are categorized as being at high or intermediate to risk of the disease. That means, in a few words, that their expected lifespan is less than three, four years. So in this trial, it was shown that the primary endpoint that was represented by a reduction of the spleen volume of at least 35% as compared to the baseline level was reached in a significantly higher proportion of patients receiving the drug, the active drug, as compared to the best available treatment. And also the key secondary endpoint that was the same degree of reduction of the spleen, but at an earlier time point, that means 24 weeks was reached by the treatment. So these data clearly indicate that INC424 was very effective against splenomegaly in patients with myelofibrosis. What do these results mean to you? Well, they, they are, in my opinion, they are a new landscape for patients with myelofibrosis. As I said before, we have no active drug against splenomegaly, but I also have to say that another secondary endpoint of the study was to measure the effect of INC424 against constitutional symptoms. These patients have a constellation of symptoms that sometimes resemble a metastatic cancer. They, have, they may have fever, they lose weight, they have drenching night sweats, they have pain, bone pain, and a, lo a lot of uh, symptoms that affect their quality of life. M many patients have to stop doing normal things in their life. S some of them have to stop working. So the drug was very effective against this constellation of symptoms. And we know that none of the drugs we have in our hands right now is able to produce so profound effects on the quality of life of these subjects. So we ha I think that INC424 is a drug that can have a profound impact on these two main complaints of the patients that are splenomegaly with all the complications that this produces and on the quality of life of the subjects. I also have to say that there is one caveat, that we know that INC424 is not a drug able to cure the disease. We have no proof about that. We have clear evidence that it can, that it can affect the quality of life, that it can reduce the symptoms in these patients. In the COMFORT 2, we were unable to measure any effect on the survival of the patient or on the later progression to leukemia. We have to keep in mind that up to 20% of the patients actually can evolve into acute leukemia. This is because the, the trial was not powered enough to give an answer to these important questions. The follow-up was too short. But we have many patients, most of the patients, that continue to be on INC424, and so we expect to be able to give an answer to these questions in the near future. So where do you look next to try to help these patients? Well, I think that since the drug is not able, as I said, to cure the disease, the next step is probably to combine the drug with other active drugs. There are a number of drugs that are under evaluation in these patients that target different pathways or sometimes have already been shown, at least in vitro, to have synergism with INC424. So I think that one important next step is to look for the combination therapy. And another aspect of the treatment with this drug is that we know that it is effective as long as it is assumed by the patients. So when you stop the drug, slowly, in some days, sometimes in some weeks, and without complications, the spleen can enlarge again and the symptoms can again out. So we know that these patients have to 
take the drug for their life. What I think will be a landscape for next evaluations is that if we can use lower doses of the drug to maintain an inactive response in order to reduce the complications of the therapy. I have to say that the drug is quite well tolerated. Non-hematological side effects are very few. The issue with the drug is represented by some worsening of uh, anemia, but anemia is one of the major problem of these subjects and we had evidence that even if some patients had worsening of anemia, their need of transfusion was not different from the best available treatment group. However, we also know that this toxicity of the drug is important in the first period of treatment, then it stabilizes. So I think that we could probably explore the effectiveness of even lower doses that could be less toxic but equally effective. Professor, thanks for joining us and sharing information about your work. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Professor Alessandro Venucci from the University of Florence, Italy, speaking about the COMFORT-2 trial here at ASCO 2011.